Click the links for Odyssey, Gab, Discord, Bid, Shoot, or do join the channel become a member or support the channel. So, Stephen King, broken by Trump derangement syndrome, as so many others on Twitter have been utterly... Uh, when they say that's a mental illness uh, and it's, it's a one-way street, they're not kidding. In 2015, 2016, when that started to go down, they saw this guy on the horizon... Like, oh, he'll never get elected president. This could never happen. <laughs> it's got closer and closer, and people are like, oh, my God. Yeah, we have to vote for Trump, because the, the only other option is Hillary Clinton, who I'm pretty sure is a uh, person of uh, scaly green skin and claws. Anyway, so um, I ha he, Stephen King's a guy who goes, oh, yeah, I'll judge the art on the merit, because I have principles. Oh, except when subjected to a little pressure, then I will change my mind. Because I guess I don't have those principles. Which is odd, because to be so wealthy and have such a body of work behind you, of mostly very good things, very good stories, and to still have a need for approval, that is weird. That is a weird need for for a bunch of nobodies, people you don't know on the internet, people who you met in real life you probably wouldn't like, or you probably wouldn't feel one way or the other for. People who mean nothing to you, they haven't proven themselves to you, you haven't proven themselves to you, to, to them, it's just nothing. It's just these just zeros and ones on a computer. Like, you're so desperate for their approval that you'll say whatever they want you to say. Whatever way the wind is blowing. That's the problem if you don't, if you don't have dogma, you don't have a core to you. It's like... You literally saw it with him. He, he made one statement, and then he went 180 degrees, and he made a statement opposing that statement because you got pressure from idiots on Twitter. That's pathetic. There's a uh, This is a guy who does not need anyone's approval. He wrote a dozen good, solid books. Yeah, he wrote more, but I can name a dozen that will stand up uh, pretty well, at least for the scenes in them, if not the entirety of the book. Black House holds up. And if you never read it, I guess I can mail you a hard copy because I think I still have a hard copy uh, somewhere on the shelf. I read it like a half a dozen times. Uh, yeah, a lot of books like that you've read so many times, it's probably time to pass it on to a new owner. Um, so send me a private Discord or email, and I can uh, try to find it and mail it to you. So the scenes with the motorcyclists, uh, it was in that book. They're riding past a space where the membranes between the worlds get really thin. That's a scene that is second to none. I mean, he he set that story. It's in. It was in Black House. you got to read it. He, he set these. It was a sequel to uh, The Talesman, which he wrote with another guy. I think they're both written with other guys. Uh, there's, there are scenes that he, he just manages to connect to something that is like some deeper truth that will raise the hairs on the back of your, your neck. Uh, and then there's stuff like, uh, so there were scenes in the Dark Tower, and, uh, overall the, you know, the books were very good, but there are also scenes that are, are brilliant in the Dark Tower, as well as cringy scenes. But if the SJWs called him, uh, some Hugo Boss-wearing Chad because he dared to disagree with a bunch of 12-year-old, you know, um, blue-haired weirdos, if I were him, I'd just throw Pet Cemetery at them. I'd be like, here, read this and just shut the f, f up or that Wendigo will get you. Uh, I think they made that into a couple different movies. And oddly enough, the Pet Cemetery Part 2, uh, they kind of turned that into a comedy and it sort of worked. So the thing is, he's in a position to have some balls, but public approval means more to him than his principles. I don't, I don't get it where J.K. Rowling has balls. She has balls. Big old ball. She's stuck by her principles. She said, "Yeah, a man is a man, and a woman is a, a woman, and you just can't, you can't make these two things equal. They, they words have meanings. Otherwise, nothing has meaning. You just you've entered into a ta tower of babble." And she, uh, she stuck to those guns. As soon as he made the merit comments, they called him an old white man. I would say that, you know, if we're lucky, we're all going to get old. And this white man wrote dozens of books that people enjoyed. And some movies, less successful, but some people enjoyed them if for nothing more than the campy appeal. So this white man accomplished that. What did you accomplish? And 99% of the losers on Twitter are obese cat ladies and soy boys who masturbate to Rage Against the Machine, tracking down the J6 boomers. Hey, let's fight the power and tear it all down. Oh, quick, call the FBI hotline. <laughs> Govern me harder, daddy. Only Nazis question the science and media and the government. Well, sign me up for the goose-stepping lessons. Because the left is so cringy that it hurts to see them turn into such pussies. They weren't always this way. At one time, there was a true left. But, I mean, 
now I guess I look back on it and realize, yeah, I guess that was a few decades ago. Now they've been completely subverted. If you told me 20 years ago that Rage Against the Machine would be helping the FBI and sell out completely, just 100%, completely sell out, well, I, I wouldn't. I was going to say I would toss the CDs, but I didn't have the CDs because the MP3s were stolen. That's what we did back in the day. I still do today. But maybe, just maybe, the left has been subverted by globalists. I didn't say commies or socialists. I said globalists. There is a very critical difference that many people on the left don't seem to understand. But if it continues, they'll find out because they'll be the... They'll be the useful idiots up against the wall with the last cigarette. Sure, this makes sense. Wealthy bankers are funding us so we can take their wealth? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> how How exactly... the Like, if the wealthy people wanted... Why, why wouldn't they just give the money away now if they're... Is it possible that you're being manipulated? I mean, because they're saying one thing and doing another. I mean, they're not they're not dumb. Maybe just maybe there's a um, discrepancy of experience between billionaire banker families that have been billionaires, ultra wealthy for a hundred years, and some anarcho capitalist uh, weed smoking twenty seven year old with a felony. Like maybe there's a a bargaining power imbalance. Where, you know, you form contracts. You're looking at like uh, defenses, contract formation, and stuff. You look at like uh, sophistication of bargaining. The people in bargaining positions it's like the people who run bank of america who are given billions maybe they were more sophisticated than um rosenbaum huber gross kurtz uh Zeminsky, you know four guys um i'm sure they're pharmacologically assisted um and felons four guys were felons you know they're all in their 30s like Maybe those aren't equal. The bargaining powers aren't equal. Maybe you're being manipulated, and you're not manipulating the bankers who have access to every resource on Earth. You know, if you're in Antifa, I know you're not listening to this, but at some point you have to look around. At, so where's the money coming from? Who's handling the money? Who's renting these cars? Who's who's providing this, this equipment? Can we take a look at those people? Just, you know, just for the shits and giggles. Let's maybe who benefits and follow the money? Anyway, so uh, you tweeted something against due process because you're a fucking idiot. Would you like to rethink this tweet? Shall we bring back witch trials? Should the state have the job of acting as both prosecutor and defense? Should the burden shift such that the accusers must disprove the accusation? Must people be their own attorneys in their defense? This seems odd because the state study case law, you know, dis their local district uh, decisions... Um, you know, what, what gets appealed and overturned and stuff like that, and uh, what goes to the uh, Supreme Court. And they pass their professional responsibility exam, which is like three hours in itself, and then they pass their state bar, which is like 18 hours? So the total total state bar is 20, a 21-hour exam, believe it or not. And they also must complete, I don't know, I'm going to forget, so many hours of continuing legal education every year to maintain their state license and be in uh, good standing. So if your average Joe six-pack isn't an attorney with thousands of hours of uh, schooling and also on-the-job training, how is he expected to zealously advocate for his interest? Doesn't that seem like a power imbalance? Even just in the interests and time uh, of time and efficiency, two lawyers can reach a solution faster than someone who is a chemist or a horror writer because they know the way of the world, the, the lay of the land, so to speak. They know like what is possible, how we can reach a satisfaction and accord very quickly. Like we can just go right to the solution that most people are going to agree on, and it's like you can do that in an hour. Where Two non-people are, are going to look up things, and it's like, it, just in the interest of, of efficiency, it's better to have mechanics talk to mechanics and uh, lawyers talk to lawyers. Why would you trust the state so much that you'd want them to argue both sides of a case, or just one side of a case, and the accused must argue their own, which a chemist or a writer would actually do pretty well, because they're both bright people. But what about somebody less sophisticated, uh, less intelligent, like your average YouTuber, they, would they know res ipsa loquitur from corpus delecti or malum in se versus malum prohibita? Really, Twitter is such cancer that it has broken these soy people. Every idea that comes into their pointy heads must be spread to the world. Even South Park made fun of them with a, a parody on the Shitter app, which is like Elon Musk wants to put brain chips 
in your mind, which, uh, you know, some ideas you probably want to wait 40 years for, as cool as it sounds, and it does sound cool to me, assuming there are no bad actors, which uh, is really difficult to assume these days with all that is going on. Totally trust the government and the media. If you follow the mainstream comics people, uh, they're among the worst, uh, worst people in the world in that regard, because literally every 20 minutes, they're tweeting about their cats or lamenting that they're out of weed or estrogen for their hormone replacement therapy, which is something they do. The most mentally ill people I've come across work in comics. They can say any bit of nonsense they want, and they're never held accountable. Getting on Gab is like having a beer, a joint, and being in a place where if you're holding back from the truth, people will call you a, a pussy-eating bundle of sticks because apparently going down on a chick makes you gay. If King said this stuff on Gab, he would get roasted. and it, I mean, it would never end. He would It would just be nuked from orbit until... He'd probably leave the platform, which is what happened to the Groypers. For some reason, there's a, I don't know, some kind of battle between the Nick Fontes clan and everyone else. But Gab and Odyssey kind of level the playing fields because the mods won't ban you. Twitter is for pussies who can't handle diversity of thought. Soy people got mad at South Park because they roasted everyone. The left wing hasn't been liberal in like 40 years. There was always that core of globalism that wanted free speech only as long as it served their interests. And once they got power, then that free speech suddenly turned to hate speech. The image of them marching in Berkeley for free speech in 1968, and then in 2020, 2018, 2016 to 2020, marching against uh, speakers on campus, like violently. It's like, gee, like, are you really, if you're an Antifa, you really want to shut down free speech? Oh, yeah, that's... My cell leader told me. My professor told me. Maybe you le need to look at your Antifa cell leaders and you look at your professor a little bit closer. Do a little investigation. A little due diligence into their backgrounds. Just a thought. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on Odyssey and Bitchute Gab. Join the Discord. It's a little bit spicy, but it's a good way to stay in touch.